Hi, this is Night Owl Fibers, a knitting podcast. Thank you so much for taking a little time out of your day to watch my video, and I hope you enjoy. I'm sorry for last week being a little rambly. I'm drinking tea today, not coffee, so that should help. Um, I'm Rachel, the dyer behind Night Owl Fibers. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Night Owl Fibers. There are going to be show notes in the Ravelry group about all the crafty things I talk about here. So, if you could hit like and subscribe so that you get notifications when the next videos go up, that would mean a ton to me. Thank you so much. So, without further ado, grab your knitting and let the crafting begin. Okay, so I thought that we'd go right into finished objects because I'm wearing mine. Um, the Madewell by Hohi Locatelli. So the sleeves are three quarter length like I talked about. And I finished the sleeves and I picked up all the stitches and worked the collar band over the past week. And I am just like so happy. I wore it all day yesterday and so far all day today. And it's just been a light summery wear that it's not too heavy for the time of year. And it's just really comfortable. Hohi Locatelli designed a wonderful pattern with this one as she always does. But um, so working my basic sock yarn, which is a 75-25 merino nylon blend in the Hollow's Eve colorway, and it definitely is light and comfortable, and I can definitely see myself wearing this one a ton. Um, I worked the bind off on the body was, let me read my notes so I don't get it mixed up, the stretchy all-purpose bind off by Lorraine Langon, Langant, I'll write that down below in the show notes because pronunciations here are not my thing. Um, but it, I use the tutorial from knittinghelp.com if that helps and I'll make sure that it's in notes so if anybody's interested. But for the collar band I used the Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off so that gave enough stretch for the blocking and the collar band not to be scrunched up. And the all-purpose stretchy bind off worked really well to give the hem of my sweater a little bit more structure. And um, I blocked it using Unicorn Baby Beyond Clean Soap. This was a little sample that I got in a swag bag from the Knit More Girls podcast. That one was definitely a cool bag. It was, I also got the swatch gauge thing that I showed last episode um, from Acreworks. I think I'm getting that right. But that one is definitely a great soap if you're looking for one that definitely doesn't have a scent because like I've used it on about three different items so far and there's no scent to it. It's gentle on indie dyed yarns. I've noticed some soaps can really take out the um, softness to the indie dyed, but this one's really gentle but cleans really well. So definitely a recommendation if you're looking to try a new soak. I'm using my Starbucks mug, Are You There collection. I think they came out with a new line of them, but I knit the body on US 4, 3.5 millimeter, and the ribbing on US 3s, which is 3.25 millimeter. And that about concludes it for this finished project, and I'll try to insert some photos to show kind of what it looks like on me, because it's kind of hard to tell right now. So I'm just going to flip my notes, like you do. So, for works in progress, since we're on sweater topics, I'll talk about my flax light. So here it is, and I have finished the body. Let me get the 
yarn tangled, not fun. So I used Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off for this because I didn't want it to be with it being a pullover snug around my hips at all. I wanted it to be nice and loose. So that is why I chose that bind off. I've picked up four sleeves on both arms and I'm knitting them concurrently again. So right now I am working the decreases on the left arm and enjoying it quite a bit. This was two nights work on the sleeves and um, they're being knit on US 8 which is a five millimeter and the ribbing is worked US 6 four millimeter. The modifications I've made to the flax light are that I added extra stitches on the underarm because I had chose the wrong size I omitted the garter panels on the shoulders and sleeves and I am using for the color work reference um, that I added in I used 150 Scandinavian motifs by Mary Jane Mucklestone and since we're on the topic of showing pages Here's the Flax Light Pattern by Tin Can Knits, which is my general gauge for sleeves and length and everything, and for the majority of the stitch count, except for those added in stitches to give me a little extra ease. Um, let's see, yarn that I'm using is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes in Evergreen. I think you can see it better knit up. It's not an army green and it's definitely not too bright. It's a really nice like pine cone, not pine cone, but pine needle green. And I'm enjoying that. That's in worsted weight. And I tried looking up last night what colorway this one is. And I believe it's Heart Heather by Patton's Croy and their classic worsted. So that is what I used for the color work because I thought it gave a nice contrast. And so I'm hoping to be done with the sleeves by next week. Block and have a nice warm and toasty sweater to wear in the cold AC months during the summer. But um, the body is a nice length. I've been able to try it on. And the sleeves are about halfway done. So just some ribbing sleeves, ribbing, and all that fun stuff of blocking, which I'm going to use the Baby Unicorn Soak again because I really like that and I want to see what it'll do for um, the 100% wool non-superwash because with the, like I mentioned, the Indie Dyed Yarn, it really seems to treat the fiber well, so I want to test it out on that and see if I need a soap that's going to be a little bit more conditioning or not but with the 100% it softens the more you wear it so it'll just be one of those good toasty sweaters then I am working on April's exclusive colorway of the month by Night All Fibers so that would be me I've knit quite a bit on this I think I was about right here when I showed last and I've worked up quite a bit. I've marked for my afterthought heel and I like using the Kirby Werby tutorial and so let's see if we can get the color to come through. There we go, not too bad. And I am going to start ribbing on these, put in I think a purple heel like if I can find a bright purple heel in my stash of solids to put in because, like I said, the colorway is We're All Mad Here, which is an Alice in Wonderland reference. And I just thought the Cheshire Cat, he's the character who said that phrase, and he was quite purple in the movie as far as color goes, that a purple heel would be quite fitting with this pair. I did, I've never talked about it before, but I do a Turkish cast on for my toe 
I'm working 58 stitches, I believe. I was, I used to work 64, and then I've just slowly gone down, and the 58 is working now. Um, and so I'm just working plain stocking it up the sock and 2x2 two two ribbing for about 20 rows, and then I put in my afterthought heel. And I don't put in the safety thread, I just mark with stitch markers. And so, like I said, April exclusive colorway, so I had a lot of fun dye dyeing up the colorways only for one month, and it's an excuse to knit a pair of socks a month. And this pair has not had nearly as much attention. This is my mystery yarn. I got the leftover amount of the skein from my mom, and I have no clue who dyed it or what what the content is, but based on it being sparkly, I'm gonna say that it's just a sparkle base, merino, nylon, and Stellina. Um, they were my opening day cast on, so for baseball, Minnesota twin colors, and I'm gonna try to knit them a bit more because they're shorty socks, they'll be off the needles quick, and then I get to cast on some new fun stuff. And I'm working these on my Haya Haya bamboo needles, which are nice to work with. They have a little bit of a grip to them more than the metal, and they're just working away. Again, Turkish cast on, 58 stitches, and then that is it for works in progress. Um, so I'm enjoying all my works in progress. It's nice to have the numbers down a little bit, but I'm definitely feeling like I want to cast on a sweater and I want to, you know, just start casting on a bunch of stuff. So my goals are to finish up the flax, um, with the sleeves and that, and then I'll be able to cast on the two sweaters that are on my dream knitting kind of list which are the sock arm sweater, which I've mentioned in previous podcasts. And then what I got in my owl post this week was the pattern The Weekender by Andrea Mowry, which is designed to have 10 inches of positive ease, which I did not realize when I ordered the yarn for it. So I'm going to go down one size so that it's only about 6 inches of positive ease. And I'm going to use Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Superwash in Brass Heather. And I thought the color was going to be a little bit brighter, but I'm actually really happy that it's this nice goldeny, deep, kind of brownish yellow color. And I think that the pattern will work up really nice and be fun. So it's. I bought the superwash this time because my green spool of the Andes in Evergreen is the 100%, which I've had experience knitting before. But I want my weekender to be a nice, just throw on around the house and stay warm with the cold AC because I get cold. <laughs> that is not an understatement. I'm like freezing in the house lately. Um, and to get free shipping on that order from Knit Picks, I got a bag to go with it, and it's Coffee Knit Sleep Repeat, and it is a eco bag, and it's 100% recycled cotton canvas with a nice strap, and all the rest of the yarn for that sweater is in that bag. That's all I got in the mail. But since I went to DFW, and so I figured I'd talk a little bit about my trip and the experience vending there. I had such a good time. Um, I'm just going to pull my notes over here so I can look at them. So DFW was a great experience. Um, it was my first time ever vending there, and I was so excited. 
because the first ever knitting festival convention whatever you want to term it that I ever attended just as a shopper was DFW and that was a couple years ago and since then I've gotten to vend at other events but it was just such a great experience actually getting to vend at a show that I've had experience shopping at and the work that the board members and the volunteers put into it it's just amazing. They're doing it because it's the joy of bringing the knitting community together and to be a part of that was just wonderful. Everybody was so kind. Um, so we drove up that Thursday, which would be April the 5th, and we got there around, oh, I don't know, probably 11 something. And so it was about a four, five hour drive up there. And we unloaded our luggage to the hotel, um, made sure that everything that was in the van was meant to go to the booth. And we got in line for the unload, parked. Luckily my dad sent a foldable cart with us. So we were able to get all the product in and the booth display set up with well, not set up. We got it all within the convention center with three loads. So we loaded up that cart three times, got in there, and, you know, things were going well. It was awesome. And then I, a couple hours later, everything set up. Put the last skein of yarn on the grid wall. Walk out in the aisle to go say hi to my friend Jessica and the grid wall falls down and crashes. And I turn around and I'm just like dazed. I have like, what happened? I'll insert a picture here to um, show you kind of what I mean and how much of a disaster it was. Um, but so, it just, it fell down. And then I had to reorganize all of the kettle dye and all of the yarn. And then I had to figure out what do we do with the grid wall? How do we set it up? How do we make it stable? Because like, it just, I was so stunned that that happened. But I've seen it happen to some other people in the past. And it just, you pick yourself up, dust yourself off and get going again and I'm really happy with the end result. And again, I'll try to put a picture of the end result in for you. It all turned out really well. It was stable and sturdy throughout the show and it looked great. And I just, but I was stunned. I was just like, I'm, by the time I got it all put back together and set up, I was ready to just, go get some food and then go to sleep. It was just one of those days where you just need the sleep to hit the reset button and then that Friday was vending and that was a great time. I mean, getting to wake up, get ready and walk to the booth and see everything still standing and be relieved. Um, and then just to get it interact with everybody that came through and see so many beautiful knitted objects. There was this one pattern, I had to write it down. It was the ink cardigan, and I can't remember the designer's name, but that is probably gonna end up in my queue at some point. Um, and so I just, all the work that everybody put in to make the event so wonderful I just, it warms my heart. And so then I just got to enjoy the event from that day forward. So Friday was great. And then Saturday, I went out to, at the end of the day after vending, I got to go out to dinner with a friend. So that was Jessica. She was working in the booth 100 Ravens. And so I got to go out to dinner with those two lovely ladies. And that was a really joy because I don't get to go out to eat 
with um, fellow crafters very often. Normally, I just am so exhausted or I don't coordinate things well, but it was just a lot of fun and really made my weekend getting to go spend time with her. Um, so I guess I'll get into some purchases and some of the fun things because that was my experience as a vendor, which was wonderful and fabulous. But now I get to talk about my experience as a shopper. Um, I bought a new purse. I was eyeing this before the grid wall even fell down because it was the booth right next to me. And this is a recycled military canvas um, bag and it's got lovely zippers and everything. And I will try to get the business card, so one sec. Okay, I've got everything laid out now. So the canvas bag and was by Ethel, there we go, by Ethel Funk. Um, Catherine was a really great person to have right next to me as a booth buddy, and I really love the bag. The next day, I had all my stuff in it, completely like chucked my old purse into my suitcase, like it's just gonna be there for now because this is my favorite. I'll just show it one more time. So it's got nice clasp and a zipper up at the top and yeah, I love it. It's just great. Um, next purchase was from Canon Hand Eyes. I've knit with her yarn before and I was getting from a booth right next to her some yarn but I found this cute little enamel pin and it is by Nerd Bird Makery but she had she was selling them in her booth and they're adorable and so that's my second purchase um my third purchase which I believe everybody knows was on my list signature needle arts in the US 1 5 inch tip 40 inch cord and it comes with a warning don't stab yourself people it's not recommended but they're quite sharp there we go yep and the cord feels nice and I'm eager to cast off a pair of socks so I can cast on with these and I have some pretty options for what I can cast on because I've got some yarn in yarn yay so then I went to whimsy stitches and Rick is such a great person if you ever see yourself at an event that he's at you have to go in and look I bought some DPN cozies there we go so Harry Potter as you can tell I bought one for myself and one for my mom and then I bought I'm not a Doctor Who fan but um, I've watched one episode and it was all right I just haven't made time to watch any more um, but I just thought it was kind of horror and scary movies and lately I've just been watching some scary movies so but they are the Needle Cozy Short and they were really awesome. They work great for a five inch needle tip. So if you ever find that you have a needle cozy that's too long, look for his um, short needle cozies. And then I'm going down my list so I don't forget. Signature needles, needle cozies. Yay, I'm excited for this one. My next purchase was from Teeny Button Studio. And here we go, here's her logo, Teeny Button Studio. And this one's Bourbon and Borden. Um, if I mispronounce something, I'm sorry. But Robin was so great. I got to meet her and her mom. And like, look at the beautiful, there's blues in here and yellows and golds and the speckles, it's just, Oh, this one definitely caught my eye. Like, I don't have much yellow in my stash, and I was just really drawn to the yellows. 
This one is her Tough Sock 8020 BFL and Nylon. And yeah, I've just been enjoying like getting some BFL yarn in my stash. And then from her, I also bought an enamel pin with her logo, the fox with the little ball of yarn. And these are going on my bag. I kept them all on their cards so that I could show you guys. Um, then she's starting to make progress keepers. And this one's a little creme brulee and it's so detailed and so pretty. I'm gonna be putting that on my um, sweater sleeves so I can show a little bit more accurately where the progress is. Um, and then here is my next purchase, which was from White Birch Fiber Arts. And this one's Easy Peasy Lemon Squeezy in the 8020 Merino Nylon 400 yards. And yeah, it's um, two shades of yellow and I believe one shade of gray, maybe two shades of gray. I saw the knitted sample and I couldn't remember right now what the sequence was. But again, more yellow, lots of fun. I love knitting up other people's self-striping. And then another cool little trinket she had in her shop were these scissors. Can you tell purple and yellow mood? So they're travel scissors and they slide out and then up. And so you have scissors that you don't have to worry about snipping your yarn when they're in your bag and definitely a cute little add-on. And then I got... Well, I traded um, Manda from Lone Star Arts, which I had mentioned was on my list. Um, this is her Armadillo base, which is a 75 Superwash Merino, 25% nylon, 463 yards. And there we go, her logo's showing a bit better there. My lights are a little bit tricky at times. But this one is the colorway Aunt, Mis Aunt, Aunt Misbehaven. I, I'm from Texas, but that was hard for me to say. I get tongue-tied, my bad. But it's just, I was looking at this one all weekend and then Sunday I'm just like, that's the last one, can I have it? I'll go get you some cash. And then we just decided that we do a trade instead. Um, which was awesome. And these are gonna be socks, I know that right now. Definitely socks. But how awesome is it? Like this, again, the speckles in it and how deep and rich that black is. Yeah, it's just awesome. And that is all I got from DFW. So I definitely thought I'd be coming back with more skeins of yarn, but considering I got the DPN cozies and the pins and it just, and the purse, I'm so excited. Like, there was such a great variety of things there, and I got the signature needles like I wanted. I mean, it was definitely a great show that was put on, and everybody was so friendly and wonderful. And I'm just so happy to have been a part of it. So if you've stuck around for this long, please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you next week.